Hey folks, welcome to the EDM studio. Today I'm going to be talking about the ESP synth and uh, the P in the ESP stands for polyphonic. So it is the polyphonic version of the ESM and along with it it's got a little bit more customization. Uh, you can tweak a few more things with the ESP so it's a little more complex but almost all the same principles apply. So we've talked about waveforms, we've talked about filters and we've talked about envelopes and that's all this is. It's the same stuff, it's just you can modify a few more things. So let's dive right into it. Uh, the ESP has a oscillator section which is this portion here and there are a couple new things here that might look new. There's a um, ability to set vibrato and wah and there's also some new waveforms. Uh, then we have the filter section and Interestingly, the envelope and the filter section work together, so um, we can set filter parameters, but those are also going to follow this uh, ADSR envelope section. So the ADSR envelope and the filter are tied together, and there's kind of two sections to the envelope. There is the filter portion, and there is the amplitude portion. So um, it's not quite as simple as the ESM in that sense, but all of these things are tied together. And then finally, there is a section with a couple new effects. So we have chorus and then we have overdrive, which was also available in the ESM. Um, but um, we have this new effect uh, that we can use that is a chorus effect. Um, okay, so let's talk about the oscillator section first. Unlike the ESM, which only had a single oscillator, the ESP has a number of oscillators that we can mix together. Uh, so there is a sawtooth wave, uh, or actually the first is there is a triangle wave. It sounds like that. And then there is a sawtooth wave. Should be pretty familiar. A square wave. And then there are these two sub-oscillators. So these are both square waves as well, and the waveform looks exactly the same, except the frequencies are different. So the first sub-oscillator is one octave below, and the uh, other one is two octaves below. So kind of mixing all three of these together, you can get this really cool kind of bassy sound, uh, sci-fi-ish sound combine all those together, which is kind of neat. And lastly we have a uh, white noise sound. And that just gives you kind of an ethereal, um, you know, non-frequency specific sound. Um, and an example of that would be like a snare drum. So snare drum typically doesn't really have uh, a single set of harmonics. It has a number of different frequencies that are present and you can use it to give almost a little bit of a percussive sound to your synth. Um, over here we've got the foot lengths. Remember this is kind of based on an organ, or at least loosely based on an organ. So these in practice really just set the octave um, of our synth. Uh, and then there's this new parameter here. And so we haven't talked about modulation yet. I'm hoping to do a video on that in the future. But vibrato is a modulation, meaning kind of a, an oscillation back and forth of the frequency. So that has a real sci-fi sound to it. Um, and you can change the speed of the vibrato. So here it is really slow. So you can speed it up and slow it down. Um, and then uh, and moving it all the way left makes it a larger vibrato. Um, and then to the right is a wah, and a wah is uh, exactly what it sounds like because it's a opening and closing of the filter so that rather than oscillating or modulating the frequency we're going to modulate the uh, frequency of the cutoff and that creates a sound that's kind of like a wah when you go wah 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 um, that's exactly what a wah is uh, 
Um, so that is the oscillator section. Next, let's talk about the frequency uh, filter, sorry, the filter section. So the frequency knob sets the cutoff frequency of the filter. Let's see, got to turn off the um, wah for you to really hear this. So you can hear the filter opening and closing. Interestingly, you know, we can actually recreate the wah effect um, by moving the cutoff frequency. So that's all that a wah is. Uh, resonance is a peak in the, um, or a peak surrounding the cutoff frequency of the filter. So you can hear the resonance there. And interestingly, you know, we talked about how the resonance is this spike around the cutoff frequency, and what that can do is, in a lot of cases, that will kind of uh, drown out the lower frequencies um, and the way that you compensate for that in a filter is generally a fatness setting. This resonance actually has fatness built in so as you increase the resonance it also boosts the low frequencies to compensate for this spike you're creating around the cutoff frequency. Um, these selectors here are kind of interesting so if you have it completely off, if you have um, none of them selected, what that means is that the cutoff frequency of your filter will not change depending on the note that you play. So if you play a high note, the cutoff frequency is exactly the same as the um, low, low frequencies you play. And um, that uh, changes as you select these. So if you put it uh, to three over three, to, to one basically, that means that the full keyboard is going to move with the cutoff frequency. So if you play a high note, you know, the cutoff frequency relative to the note you're playing will be higher than if you play a low note. And if it's one third or two thirds, what that means is that it's somewhere in between. Um, lastly, let's talk about the envelope section. So we've, in, in the ESM video, I talked about um, intensity. What that is, is that's the depth of the ADSR envelope. So it's essentially, you know, how big is the, um, uh, how big is the spread of the uh, uh, movement in the ADSR envelope? It's kind of like a multiplier. And the velocity is related to velocity information, meaning how hard you hit the key. So if you have a, uh, a high setting on the velocity, what that means is it will take into account the velocity information um, more aggressively than if you set it um, all the way low. So if you have it all the way down, the intensity with which I hit the key doesn't really impact the way that the filter behaves. If I have it all the way up, what that means is that if I hit the note softly, then let's see if I get, I messed this up in the last video, so I want to make sure I get it right. If you hit it softly, that means that the cutoff frequency will um, clamp down more slowly than if you hit it uh, hard. So if you hit it hard, then the um, cutoff frequency doesn't change, whereas if you hit it softly, uh, it does. Um, next, we have a volume section. Volume, you know, is pretty straightforward. That's just pure amplitude. And then velocity volume is uh, kind of the same thing, uh, except for the amplitude. So um, both the amplitude and the cutoff frequency are going to follow this ADSR envelope but the, uh, the um, velocity impact on how it follows this ADSR envelope can be changed independently for the cutoff frequency and for the amplitude. Um, ADSR should be really straightforward. I did a whole video on this, but um, a, putting the knob up here means you have a long attack, down here is a, low, uh, a, a quick attack, um, D is delay, S is sustain, R is release. So, um, short, uh, uh, or sorry, decay. Short decay, long decay. Short sustain, long sustain. Short release, long release. Um, okay, uh, so that is the ADSR envelope, and we can kind of tinker with that a bit. So you can, with, with a long attack, you hear it kind of swell when you press the key. Right, it's like a really long attack. And then if you set the attack really short, that means that the note is going to attack really quickly. 
same with decay, um, except that's the reverse. So that's how quickly the note will fall off after the initial attack. And a short decay makes the note sound like a pluck. Sustain is um, after the decay, after the um, you know fast portion of decay. Sustain is how long does the it take for the note to uh, lose its energy. So if you you know pluck a string on a guitar, sustain is how long will that note continue to play um, with no you know further energy. So I could sustain forever, or I can have the sustain. Um, you know, drop off more quickly. And finally, release is you know how long it takes for the note to go to zero after you let go of the key. So a long release kind of sounds almost like a reverb. Um, all right, so that's the ADSR uh, ADSR envelope. And finally, we have these two effects. Um, overdrive I talked about in the last video, but that's basically amplifying the signal and then clipping it. So it means that your signal is going to, if it's not a square wave already, let's say it's a sawtooth wave, it means that your um, signal is going to start approaching a square wave and have that distorted sound to it. And you can even see the harmonics start to come in here. Uh, remember, a sawtooth wave is um, all the odd harmonics. As we add overdrive, we're getting more and more frequency content up here. Uh, and then finally, chorus is uh, kind of like the number of voices. It's as though you took your signal and uh, you were to either delay it or advance it uh, just a few milliseconds. And what that creates is kind of like, um, you know, if, if I were to be playing a single oscillator, let's say it's just a sine wave, then I were to get an army of oscillators. and uh, now they're all playing at once, so it sounds like a chorus or a um, you know a uh, a large group of people all playing the same note. As opposed to just kind of this boring sound of one. So that's what chorus is. And um, I think that's it. That's really all the print. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, all the parameters of the ESP. Uh, thanks for checking it out and see you next time.